Hey guys, this is Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and it's time to plant one on me. So these are questions I get from you underneath the videos, on my Twitter, on my Instagram, on Facebook. I just compile all of them in this handy dandy book, which is why I have this in front of me. <laughs> um, but I wanna get to some of your questions today. So one of the questions I had gotten earlier, and I couldn't remember the name of the hose that I use, um, was the question of the hose. And I have a hose, for those of you who don't know, in, it's about 150 foot feet long and it's in my home and I have yet to do a post that focuses on streamlining the watering process, which I think is really important for when you get, you get a lot of plants in your home. And I promise I will do that post for you. But um, one of the things that uh, has helped me streamline the watering process is by having a hose in your home. It's kind of crazy to think like 150 feet, that's a lot of hose, especially if it's like one of those old school green ones that you often have in your like parents' yard. But um, this one is, uh, again, I don't really know the brand because there's so many different brands, but it is one of those retractable garden hoses so it's it's expandable as well the best thing to do is if i show it to you so hold on one second i'm gonna bring it over from here <laughs> so this is what it looks like it's got this i think it looks like frog entrails or something like that the the insides of frogs and it expands when the water goes through it and the great thing is as you can see it just folds up really nicely so i usually wind it up the only downside to this particular hose, there's not many, but the only downside that I found, the only downside that I found with that hose is that sometimes it does get a little twisted. So I have to go on the top of like a ladder or a high chair and let it unfurl and let it untwine because you, it, it sometimes just builds up a lot of pressure within the hose because it's wound around itself. But otherwise than that, it's been a huge help for me um, I have it attached to the sink in my kitchen and there's an on off switch as well as an on off switch with the, the spray nozzle. So highly recommend, great question. And as I said before, I so promise to do a streamlining of the watering system, probably even do a video on it because it's better if, I, if you probably see it rather than me writing about it. All right, so we're down to that question. And thank you for the question. I never wrote down who asked it. So um, I appreciate whoever is out there who asked that question because it's a good one. So here's a question from Earth, Air, Fire, Water, Bear. I love these names. Your place is awesome, definitely a jungle. How do you deal with plant pests with everyone so close together? it looks like it would be dif difficult to quarantine nice acquisitions. Great question. Actually, I got um, questions similar to this about like, what do you do with bugs in your house? And I never really understood that question because I never had an insect problem within my home up until last year when I started to grow food in my house, meaning Potatoes, by the way, potatoes brought in every kind of pest imaginable. But when people used to ask me that question, I didn't understand whether people were saying, oh, are bugs attracted to your plants or are you having like a lot of insect pests? And six years I went blissfully unaware of any insect pests in my home whatsoever. And bugs were never a problem. That, like I said, changed last year when I started growing some vegetables. So I did an experimental closet garden where I had like potatoes and I have pineapple and I have some herbs and lettuce. And what I found is that you not only like to eat those types of foods, but so do the bugs. And particularly with the potatoes, when I had the potatoes, they grow like wildfire, especially the foliage um, above the soil. And I had everything from like white flies to mealybugs to aphids. Um, I started seeing thrips in the house, which are a little um, difficult to take care of. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I have so many plants in the home and all of a sudden they have this um, bug outbreak. So into your question, when plants start to touch one another, a, a lot of those insects that I mentioned, at least in the case of the mealybugs and scale insect, for instance, even in some cases aphids, they don't really travel from plant to plant. 
um, unless like one aphids could develop wings and eventually fly to a, a plant if they, they overpopulate a plant. But like scale and mealybugs, which is a type of scale, can't really go from plant to plant unless they have like some type of land bridge or plant bridge for that matter. And, um, and that will create more infestation on your plants, particularly if the bugs are generalists. So for me, um, I've done all sorts of different types of things. Um, typically when somebody has an infested plant, a lot of folks will just throw it away. Uh, a plant has to really get infested for me in order to be able to do that. Otherwise, I try to quarantine it. Usually I put it in the shower. And depending on the type of pest, oftentimes a lot of pests you could just start to manage by doing some quick sprays which is actually why that hose comes in handy. You could do some really hard sprays. So if you have an aphid, for instance, doing some really hard sprays, same with the mealybug, just with water, not even with any kind of insecticide or even any kind of natural soap, I usually do that as my, my first step. This might make you squeamish to know, but I love using integrated pest management in the home. It kind of is similar to a greenhouse condition. If you have a greenhouse, it's a closed container, more or less, and you could get insect outbreaks, whether that's like thrips or whether that's mealybugs, aphids. So I did a couple experiments uh, last year as well when I started growing food of beneficial insect release. And I first went with green lacewings and green lacewings are a gorgeous insect. I remember seeing these as a kid and just being very fast, fascinated by, um, by them. They're in the Neuroptera order and um, they are like lions. They just will eat. Um, they're like the lions of the insect world. They, they, they will eat a lot, particularly in the, the larval stage. So they don't really do much when they're adults. I think they actually, if I'm remembering correctly, they, they feed maybe on a little nectar and pollen. But as um, in their in their younger stage they are very ferocious and they're pretty much generalist when it comes to insect pests so that was the first one that i released and i have some really great photos of of green lacewing larvae like eating um uh or nymphs eating really cool uh aphids and like all this kind of stuff so that was a very good release and then i would say mealybugs, I released um, uh, something similar to a ladybird beetle, but it's like a black ladybird beetle, and it's called a mealybug destroyer, aptly named, or called a crypt. Those are great, but I had to use some harvesting techniques because just like ladybugs in the morning, I found that they were on the window and um, attracted to the light of the window. So I would take a little business card and take them on the business card and put them back onto the particular plants that had been mostly infested by mealybugs. And then with thrips, which had been now more recent problem within my home, I brought in thrip bore and thrip back. So uh, one is a little mite that feeds on thrip babies that are in the soil and the um, minute pirate bug, which I think is called thrip X, um, minute pirate bug actually feeds on more of the adult stages and I got both of those at the same time. So I have not used any kind of insecticide or pesticide or anything within my home. I really do try to keep my plants healthy. If I see an infestation, I'll try to quarantine that particular plant and or I'll bring in some beneficial insects and I'll use some like sharp water sprays and things like that. So there's not much else that I typically do. Again, depends. I, I'll go into this a little bit more in depth um, in kind of future posts about how to identify insects, pesty insects and pests in your home and how do you deal with that. But for right now, that's what I have for you and I hope that answers your question. So if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, put them here below the video. Look for me on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn. You could find me on Twitter at S-R-O-A-K-E-S -E and on Facebook. And um, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these. Thanks a lot.